Hi, my name is Alex with Ape Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be talking about page macros and Confluence. This little feature is super powerful, and if you're not using them in your Confluence pages, I honestly think you're missing out on a lot. So please make sure you watch this entire video so you can get an appreciation or at least an understanding of what page macros are and how you can leverage them to make your pages that much better and hopefully increase your experience with Confluence. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like if you get any value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Confluence. All right, so there's actually a lot of macros. And the easiest way to see the macros is you're going to want to go into a page and you're going to want to be in edit mode. Once you're in edit mode on a page, there's actually like a dedicated section to view all the macros. But for some reason, Atlassian doesn't make this like obvious that it's a section. But if you look over here, there's a little plus sign and it says insert. If you click on that and you click on view more, this basically brings you to the macros. This is all the different things that you can do within the wonderful world of Confluence. So you have macros for formatting your pages, for formatting just your Confluence pages. And there's just so many different things here. So many really, really cool things. I'm just going to show you one. I'm going to show you a children display in a section. But first, I want to show you what's out there. There's just so many of them. I'm just going to click on all just so you can kind of see them. And I'm just going to scroll. And so action items is something that you're going to use very commonly. Mentioning someone is something that you use commonly. This status one's really neat too because this one allows you to essentially create your own statuses outside of the world of Jira. And this can be customized to whatever you want. Although I do wish Atlassian. Some more colors would be much appreciated. These info panels, note panels, warning panels, success panels, these just add some color, some flair to your pages. So you can get very creative with making your pages look really, really nice and like professional. You can add tables, although I wish tables function a little bit more like they do in Excel. They're kind of weak in my opinion, but you can add tables and have some basic functionality like you do in Excel. Layouts is really neat too. So you don't have to have just like a one tier, one column page. You can actually add layouts and columns and really structure your pages to look really, really nice. So there's just so much you can do. You can add headings. You can do embedding Jira dashboards or gadgets into Confluence. There's a lot of just built in little things where you have like a space list, a user list, iframes to bring in different websites into your pages, some integrations with Trello. There's just a lot of things that are all built in. Draw.io is a great example of a third party plugin that you can add to the marketplace and add in. And then you have extra functionality added to your Confluence. So a lot of different vendors actually can expand these macros and what's available and, and the, just the different ways that you can customize your Confluence pages. So I highly recommend you check these out. So I'm actually just going to show you one. I'm going to make sure I pick a good example though. And so what I want to show you is I'm going to go to a space where I just have a tree structure. I want, I want to essentially have like a bunch of pages underneath. As you can see here, I have a couple of pages where it just shows you this structure. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this particular page. And then I'm going to come over to these to the little plus sign and using these macros is super, super easy. All you got to do is go to the one that you like. So I'm going to go to Confluence content. And I'm just going to click on children display and click insert. When you do that, that's like literally all it takes. Like it confluence goes and does all the stuff behind the scenes. You can, you do have the option to like select some of the, some of the, um, settings here. So I can show descendants. I can select which is going to be the parent page. I can specify a limit, the death, the heading style. So there's, there's quite a few conf um, configurations that you can do, but once you kind of set this up the way you want, all you got to do is hit publish and then that macro, whatever you insert it is then going to be in effect. And so now rather than like, this is like a perfect macro that I like to put like on the overview page, because now rather than like hunting for all those children pages and what's like downstream, you can at a glance, see everything and just jump directly into that page. So I can just go straight there and it'll take me to that specific page without hunting. Because if you remember earlier, all these were collapsed. And so I'd actually have to go in here and expand and expand and expand. And then eventually I would get to the page. But by having this like directory level at the top, if you will, I can very easily just come in 
and see what's happening at the top and and then be able to um, navigate and, and go through whatever page I want to without having to hunt things down. I really recommend you give a lot of these different inserts or macros, whatever you want to call them, a try because they do significantly enhance that confluence experience. Adding color, like this one here, there's a little bit of color. This is a table. And so there's there's some cool stuff. There's some really, really neat things that you can do. Obviously, if you've seen my Jura videos or my integration with Jura, you can see how to bring in all this Jura information. These are all just by clicking that little plus sign and going specifically to the Jira stuff. So a lot of functionality, a lot of features that you might be missing out if all you're doing is just capturing just text. And so you can do that, all right? Just capturing knowledge and information and just putting it in here is cool. But click on that little plus sign and go and explore. There's just so many options, so many different things for you to look at. And they significantly do enhance. But just be careful because it can be overwhelming. As you saw, there's quite a few options. And so take your time, explore, look up the documentation. Many of these are documented. Many of these you can just simply go to Confluence and like you can just type in Confluence, uh, Jira, insert. And so you can just look at those. And then at last, it's going to have some documentation on how to actually use those items. So it's really interesting. I think they're, again, very powerful. I'm starting to sound like a very broken record here. But give it a try if you haven't used them already. And let me know in the comment section which one's your favorite one. I, I have my personal favorite ones. But I'd like to know from you what's your favorite. And if you've made it this far and you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Drop a like if you got value out of this video. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.